crap is when he gets all. So obviously I have to word things in a manner of language that Mormons understand and know. Because apparently no matter how cool my pictures are. <laughs> Mormons will not come to the videos. So, yeah, Joseph Smith. 1838 had a religious, moral, ethical collapse and transition. He gave it all up and changed it. Became a new creature, a monster. There's a monster song. It's not animal that's popping into my head. To think about what the theme song and description below will be. So let's go over them. I've already done the videos last couple of days going over the list because I went and made the list and put it in my little reference book for videos. I have to have reference books. I use associative memory. So the ideas come to my mind and go, oh, isn't that the same as that other passage? And, and yeah, I use reference books. That's what all these books are. Need to PDF them. So, the big projects yet to be done, blah, blah, blah. So, uh, we begin with section 119. Joseph Smith, 1838, has a mental breakdown. Now begins priestcraft. And not just priestcraft, it's like a whole extortion racket, criminal mob thing. I guess we should go over it here. So apparently this is July 8th, 1838. It all of a sudden magically appeared in 1844 for Brigham Young's 1844 edition when Brigham Young took over the church and was now running the church. So he needed an economy and it just happened to find this 1838 document that appeared in 1844, right when Brigham Young took over. And so this is awesome. Good news. We can now run the church in Joseph Smith's ab absence. As, uh, uh, oh, that's another one to add. President of 12 to succeed. President of the church. Yes, new information for this video. So even though you've heard it in the other videos, those one or two of you, <laughs> you got new stuff for this one. Aren't you lucky? Don't you feel glad? Aren't you glad you used dial? Okay, so yeah. 1838. Brigham Young takes over the church in Joseph Smith's absence when he was in Liberty Jail. In fact, he wasn't even in Liberty Jail yet. He was out on bail, but wasn't with the saints. He was on the lam, running and hiding, ducking and weaving with the 200 pound gold plates. And, uh, and Brigham Young shows up in a minutes meeting. It's in the Joseph Smith papers. I did the video. These are actual documents, primary source documents, that shows Brigham Young being called the president of the church. Because Thomas B. Marsh was also in attendance and he was called president. Thomas B. Marsh was president of the 12 still. Wouldn't be till the next month in November when he would say, I'm out. Joseph Smith is just too wild and wacko for me. I'm gone. And so both of them were called president. There were no counselors in the Quorum of the Twelve. Why is Brigham being called president other than Joseph made the change? The Twelve president becomes the... Wait a minute, but that means Thomas B. Marsh was actually the president of the church and Brigham therefore must have been the president of the Twelve. Hmm... Well, it's got to stay faith-promoting. <laughs> so we'll just 
just dismiss all contradictions, confusions, and questions. We'll refer you to your stake president for disciplinary action. Okay, so yes, the president of the Twelve now succeeds the president of the church. <laughs> and if you, should I do the original stuff from all of the... Should I? Are you guys that unknowing of Mormonism that I would have to do that for you? Because it's section 107 verse 22. That's what Joseph Smith established in canon scripture as the process for succession and nobody did it so nobody has the keys but faith promotion put all that aside everybody else are anti-mormon anti-christ core whores brigham young is one two president of the church i'm sure I, I know i can't assume that you're no mormonism because I've had too many comments of Mormons who claim they and expose that they don't know Mormonism. Even on the one priesthood video I did the other week, oh my god, all priesthood holders I thought got taught these lessons, got chastised by their leaders, nope! <laughs> nope! <laughs> it was just me. Oh my god. So, yeah, that's another one added. Okay, back to priestcraft, section 119. We'll just, we'll give you the changes. We're not going to tell you the truth. There is no truth but your feelings. Whatever you feel is true is true. And the way that this is set up, it, it's true. Because the church says so. Don't want to go against the presidents of the church. The prophets of the church of Brigham Young. I mean, Jesus Christ. We're getting to that one. So, section 119, July 8th, 1838. Joseph Smith has the failure of the bank, had nothing to do with Danites taking out loans, failing to pay back the loans, so that Brigham, or Joseph Smith would get in trouble and Brigham Young would take over the church. No, it had nothing, to, that's not faith promoting. Get that out of your mind. It just, it failed. And so Joseph Smith, through revelation from Jesus Christ himself, thus saith Jesus, I require all Mormon surplus property to be put into the hands of the bagmen, I mean bishops, of, of my church in Zion. You do know what a bagman is. It's a criminal organization. He's the guy who collects the money. The bagman, the money bags. It's a gangster thing. <laughs> Joseph turned into a gangster. Everybody wants to be a gangster. <laughs> As they beat down their computer. <laughs> and roll up the window. So that <laughs> the black man in the car next to him will not hear that he's listening to black man music. <laughs> If you're ashamed to be seen listening to it, then there's a problem. And so, uh, yeah, surplus property, got to give it to the bishop. For the building of mine house, got to build those temples. But the temples also are land ownership. So, building the kingdom. And that's what they say, for the laying of the foundation of Zion. Zion is the land, it is the buildings. That's another change with this section. With this change to priestcraft. Oh, whoops, I'm jumping ahead. For the priesthood. And for the priesthood. There it is. First two. Priestcraft. Joseph Smith, 1838, now practicing priestcraft. This is the new financial law of Jesus, priestcraft. Never mind the Book of Mormon. Priestcraft. The president of the church makes the laws 
and can change to whatever he wants. So says Benson in his apostolic talk at BYU. He wasn't a president then, he was just an apostle. And it's like the 17 fundamentals or 11 fundamentals of the president of the church. Something like that. And in there he says, the living president is the one in charge. Anything he says goes. All previous dead presidents, dead presidents, <clears throat> null and void. Even Jesus, null and void, because we got a living president of Jesus. So that's what it means here. For the debts of the presidency of my church. So despite priestcraft for the presidency, the president of the church can spend even more beyond the priestcraft money that he gets. And any debts that he incurs as president of the church, Mormons have to pay it. They have to pay it. Just like I saw the church released church news thing about the legal documents of the church. And I, they showed that Emma Smith, upon Joseph's death, had to pay from the estate rather than Brigham Young with the Book of the Law that he had been keeping the money for the Nauvoo Temple, I'm sure. None of that money was used. Emma had to pay from the estate. Uh -huh. uh, and that's just the beginning of the tithing. So says verse 3. So say we all. Faith promotion. And so then you have to pay one-tenth of your interest annually. And under Benson, that was changed to wages. So if you're working a part-time job, you got to pay 10%. Doesn't matter if you can't pay the bills. Church comes first. Got to build Zion. The buildings, the land. That takes precedence over you. I mean, you think women have it tough these days as sperm has more rights than a woman? Well, buildings have more rights than you in Zion. So say we all. And so what this means is because of this extortion racket, uh, it turns other crimes into more serious crimes. You know, polygamy becomes sex trafficking, for example. And if you dip into the little teeny boppers, yeah, it becomes child sex trafficking. You, know, you can consult Matt Gates on that one. He's apparently gotten away with that crime. Venmo, was it? That's how he was paying for them to be transferred from state to state. Why are they in government? Oh my god. Oh my god. They overthrow the government and they're still in office. Oh my god. We're all doomed. Nobody cares. Not faithful, money. And so, yeah, Joseph Smith is a uh, sex deviant. Section 132. Go there next. Now, there's some confusion here, Bruce R. McConkie. <laughs> Joseph, or Bruce R. McConkie says that section 132 was recorded July 12, 1843. But the uh, only document is the History of the Church, Volume 5, page 501 to 507. And that was written by Willard Richards after Joseph was dead. 18, or the Section 132 did not appear in any Doctrine and Covenants until 1876, the year before Brigham Young died. The year after another Brigham Young wife abandoned her temple covenants, needed to commit suicide, and she didn't. And so she took him to court, and he ended up in jail for a day. He was passed. Unfaithful woman. And so, yeah, his polygamous wife locked him up in jail over uh, non-support payments. And, uh, and so then Brigham Young, studying the scriptures, found this. <laughs> and 
put it in section in his Doctrine and Covenants in 1876. Mm -hmm. Okay, whatever, whatever. And so, yeah, in this chapter, women are sex slaves. Got to combine it with section 119. And then any woman who does not understand or believe this, you're not being faith promoting. You got to get the right feelings on this. You got to go to the temple again. I refer you to the original law of obedience, women. And in case you think that Nelson is, you know, becoming a progressive snowflake on you, pfft, you don't know Mormonism. Who's the Lord? That's Jesus. Who speaks for Jesus? Nelson. What does Nelson tell you to obey? The family proclamation. What does the family proclamation tell you to obey? Your husband. It's never changed. Why did you think it changed? You obey your husband. He has the pants in the family. And if he wants to wear shorts or khakis or dress slacks, that's up to him. He's the presider. Got to have the right feelings on this. No doubt promotion. If by chance you meet an apostate, anti-Mormon, anti-Christ Korahor, do not let them live. Quickly force them to obey or help them to keep their temple covenant penalties. Got to be faith promoting here. Why are Mormons still Mormon? I don't get it. I don't get it. And so yes, also your marriage ceiling. Did you forget or were you staring into your husband's eyes and you weren't listening and had to be again reminded by the sealer, hello, hello, you're supposed to say <laughs> yes. So yes, in the temple sailing, women become slaves to her husband, not the man to the wife. Got to pay attention to those words. Words are more powerful than the sword you're supposed to use on yourself when you violate your temple covenant oaths. And so yeah, in section 132, uh, women have to obey or they die, and thus they have to produce children or they die, and so rape is acceptable. Uh, and this is what Joseph Smith was doing in 1838. Now, Bruce R. McConkie is a little weird here because he's saying that this had been known to Joseph Smith since 1831. Really? Who said? Oh, right, faith-promoting Mormons who wrote it in their journal. Yeah, I remember, you know, Brigham Young told us in 1852 that we're now supposed to publicly practice polygamy. And so I remember Joseph Smith, uh, he told me in 1831 that a, a fiery flaming angel with a sword that was flaming and and it was see-through so that you could see clear to his bo boobs and that he was naked and he was male and, and threatened him to practice polygamy in 1831. Otherwise, he was going to be smitten down immediately for not obeying immediately. And so it wasn't until 1843 when Joseph Smith finally obeyed. That's why he died the next year. He fell. So Brigham Young, as the president of the Twelve, because of 1838's change, now becomes the president of the church. And so, no, this was 1838. This is the first documented case of an accusation against Joseph Smith for polygamy. Oliver Cowdery, his 15-year-old housemaid. Apparently, Oliver Cowdery caught them in the act. You know, she was modeling her garments. No, that was 1842. Yeah. Okay, so we can't use garments here. This is the further changes 
allowing Brigham Young to take over the temple and make changes, giving him authority as president of the Twelve to have the keys of Elijah to be in charge of the temple, no longer in charge of missionary work. No, no, we got a more important mission for you, Brigham. You know, that was 1842's change. <laughs> but disregard women getting priesthood and priesthood office. That is an abomination and the Lord would never allow such a thing. Right, Oaks? Mormon's Mormon. I don't understand. And so adultery is perfectly fine. Because everybody was saying Joseph Smith was going to other men's wives and saying she's mine now. Got to give her up. Got to give it up to the president. I've got the title, baby. And of course, child rape. Yeah, Joseph Smith. Rapist for Jesus. And so, yeah, you can commit all kinds of crimes in here, too. So, yes, that's exactly what Joseph Smith did. He was murdering any Mormons who didn't obey. If you will not follow this new religion, you will be murdered. So says Thomas B. Marsh, so says David Widmer and others. W.W. W. Phelps did him yesterday or this morning. Which one was it? Whatever one it was. <coughs> yep, W.W. W. Phelps, excommunicated by Joseph Smith on March 17th, 1839, while Joseph was in Liberty Jail. But Thomas B. Marsh, no, he didn't get excommunicated on March 17th, 1839, with W.W. W. Phelps, because Joseph Smith was in Liberty Jail and so it was absentia. Hmm. Well, it's not faith promoting, so we'll just dismiss it. Just ignore it and hope it goes away. We'll make the changes in Wikipedia as needed. The faith promotion Wikipedia. <coughs> screw science, screw logic. We've got religion to tell us the truth. Mixed with psychology. And uh, citizens, I mean, they're evil people. They're not converting to the church. If they're not going to convert to the church, they need to die. It's for their own benefit because it would be better for them to have died rather than to continue to be a prick to the church. <laughs> it's a liberty jail joke for you. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> and, and so, yeah, Joseph Smith also now justified in, in acquiring the possessions of other people, the land and the property of other people. Because he's the living prophet of Jesus, Jesus tells him to do it, it's okay, it's not a crime, it's not theft, it's not robbery. And so, yeah, and if they are evil, you wipe their feet, you wipe your feet on their doorpost, and, or the doormat, and then you burn their house down. So, yeah, Joseph Smith was doing all this, 1838. These are the testimonies of Mormons, and out of the mouths of two or three testimonies is every truth established. So why would people lie? They're Mormons. Mormons don't lie. You have to believe them. You have to validate them. You know, we have other authors who validate the feelings of these other Mormons who wrote about Joseph in their journals. So it's all established as true. And so, yeah, Thomas B. Marsh, also in his affidavit, as he's a traitor, 
you know, claim that Joseph Smith was committing seditious conspiracy to overthrow the government. You know, what those deep state Dems are doing right now, overthrowing the government and the Constitution so that the church can step in and say, religious freedom. It's in the First Amendment. No, no, no. <laughs> religious freedom. We demand religious freedom. Jesus. And everybody must conform and comply to our religious freedom. <coughs> and our standards and values. <laughs> Water. Water on the set. <coughs> <coughs> and so, yeah, this is why women are evil. You got to cover up and hide, women. Your bodies are evil. You know, I don't care if it's in the image of Heavenly Mother. Do we ever talk about her? No. She's covered up and hidden. Just like you should. You know, you, you're an addiction. Your bodies are an addiction. We look at you in, our, in your eyes and we're addicted. You gotta cover up. Put a veil over your face. Why did they take away the veils in the temple? Put them back. Can't see your ankles. Gets us all hot and horny. <laughs> and it harms children. It's a danger to children. It's a good thing somebody invented an app to blur or ban nudity from children's cell phones. And then you can get that other app that our Speaker of the House is using with his son. Hey son, I'm looking at porn. This is what I'm looking at. Oh, wow, cool dad. This is the porn I'm looking at. Ah, I love you dad. Ah, I love you too, son. Are Mormons using that app? Bonding with your son. Making sure you're paying attention to the content he's looking at. Yep. And so, yes, not only is Joseph Smith a seditious conspirator trying to overthrow the government, he was also a terrorist. He was going to not only stop with, you know, the world is not enough for Joseph Smith. Bond stole that from Joseph. Because he was going to go after the rest of the world after America falls. So says Thomas B. Marsh. You know? And uh, the inverted pentagram. Yeah, I'm saving the best for last. Inverted pentagram. This isn't the last. But this is a good one. <laughs> you see... It's Lucifer's plan of happiness for our eternal salvation that because of our mortality, we're just too stupid and disobedient to ever be saved. So Lucifer came up with this great idea. Take away our agency, force us to obey, give us magic, under I mean, underwear. It's no longer magic. Even though it says it's a shield and a protection to you against the power of the destroyer until you've finished your work on the earth. Oak says it's not magical. They need to put a little, you know, small print on your underwear tag. Magic results vary. And so, to symbolize Lucifer's taking away of agency that Joseph Smith is implementing here, Mormons just are, are completely wicked and they need to be forced to be compelled to believe and obey, conform and comply. And so, Joseph Smith is the one who embraced the inverted pentagram and purposely would go on to have it on the design for the outside of the Nauvoo Temple. <laughs> uh, 
as, <laughs> as Brigham Young. No, no, no! <laughs> Joseph! Gotta blame Joseph. <laughs> Wasn't his brother-in-law. <laughs> it was assigned after. <laughs> no, no, no! <laughs> Why are Mormons Mormon? I don't get it. Why are ex foes never most so easily fooled? I, I, that's more shocking. Mormons, yeah, because if it if they ignore it, it might go away. But you guys, you guys are perpetuating this, doing all your videos about how Joseph Smith became a monster. You don't put all the pieces of the puzzle together, do you? No, no, no. No, no, no. All right. The best for last. You're gonna save the best for last. I like that song. Even though I've got a new love. London Grammar. She has a song that I had heard. And I, I'm Carl's Jr. today. I... You know, it's a holiday, so I went to Carl's Jr. What holiday, Travis? Oh, one Jewish Passover. In case you forgot, because this is the best for last. But two, I did the video this morning, and only a couple of you saw it already. Uh, it's Friday the 13th times two, guys. During Passover of no other days, so save the best last. Okay. So in case something else comes up that sounds better, that will be the theme song in the description below. All right. So after at 33 minutes, 33. The honorary rank of the Scottish Rites. Yeah, Joseph became a Scottish Rites. Even though, technically, that was again in 1842. His dad and brother, Hiram, were York Rites. But after 9-11-1826, which we... Shh, that's not faith promoting. Because it has to do with the best for last and why the Book of Mormon and the church got started nope don't want to listen to that faith promotion church has got to be true as the prophets tell us it is and so yes in 1838 Joseph Smith changes the religion what once was Jewish is now morphed into Christianity. And so, yeah, Willard Richards made sure to correct Joseph because in 1838 he forgot that he changed the name. <laughs> I told you this was the best for last. <laughs> oh my god. April 26th, 1838. And there's another one of those documents that they magically found in Willard Richards' History of the Church. And put into the eighteen seventy six edition. And so <clears throat> for thus shall my church be called, Nelson quoted this conference. Gave a little smug at the end, 
See, Travis, you're wrong. Not Jewish. Bleep you, says Christian. And so, history of the church. Eighteen thirty-eight. Later that summer. <laughs> Joseph changes the name of the church in April, but forgets that it was called the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. And so, when Willard Richards went and corrected Joseph Smith in the Joseph Smith history, he inserted Jesus Christ, because Joseph Smith forgot, and it even got published in 1842 in the Times and Seasons without the name Jesus. And so, yeah, it, that's why Brigham and Heber also, you know, their licenses had to have the correct name of the church to go to England with, and so they just, you know, Joseph he kept forgetting. <laughs> and so they, they forged his signature because they knew that he would approve of the name of the church to go to England. Yep, well, Joseph Smith papers, they prove this church is true. That's why they don't make any of the changes. Because all the changes are true. Don't need to change them. Joseph Smith just needs to be corrected. And so we've made the corrections. And so the Joseph Smith papers only confirms that Joseph Smith needed to be corrected. And so, yeah, because it's now Christian, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ now appears to Joseph Smith in the first vision. Well, duh. I mean, Heavenly Father says, this is my only begotten Son. Hear Him. Well, it's got to be Jesus, because it's Jesus in the, that New Testament Christian documents. Ignore the Bible, or the Book of Mormon that says the whole Bible was written by Jews. Shh. Nope. Not faith promotion. And so, yeah, Jesus is now the Christ. Joseph Smith changes religion. The Christ is now changed from that Jewish Christ. You know, Joseph Smith, Messiah Ben Joseph from 2 Nephi chapter 3. Can't, no, uh-uh, that's wrong. Got to correct that. Jesus is the Christ. Anti-Mormon, anti-Christ Travises. Trying to teach people lies and so yeah the name of the church is changed it's now Jesus it's now Christianity and so the Book of Mormon is now another testament of Jesus Christ Brigham Young thank God he was a missionary to go around and tell the truth to people hey it's the Book of Mormon it's another testament of Jesus Christ Joseph you know he, he forgets and so we got to correct him you know, we're a Christian religion, Jesus is our Christ. So when you read through the Book of Mormon, think Jesus Christ. And then join my church after we murder Joseph. I mean, after Joseph is murdered by the mob that were paid by somebody else other than Brigham and Heber with the law of or the book of the law type money. Of section nineteen hundred nineteen. Nope, somebody else, not them. That wasn't the Judas price. Somebody else paid the Judas price against Joseph. Don't know who. Money trail went blank. It did not magically appear right before Thanksgiving last year as Nelson rushed it out to the Joseph Smith papers. That was in the church's documents the whole time and the Brigham Young papers. Nope, nope, nope. Not faith promoting. And so, yes, the final thing Jesus Christ. Is now literal history because the Book of Mormon is now literal history. There were cows, expo never mows. Deal with it. Don't have a cow, man. Cows. You know, gold, golden plates. Golden. Not gold. Golden. Because golden is 
easier to run around the forest with rather than 200 pounds. Joseph doesn't know what he's talking about. We got to keep correcting him. So yeah, second coming of Jesus, not the Jewish Christ, because the Jewish second coming obviously didn't happen. You know, there was no Messiah Ben Joseph who came and set the temple up and and uh, set the church and the rituals up so that they can prepare the people for Messiah Ben David, who obviously has not shown, despite all the Jewish prophecies saying that he's shown, they're all wrong. Jewish authors meant to say Jesus. No man knows the day or the hour of his coming. And Jewish Christ, yeah, we know exactly when they were supposed to come and they didn't come. No Messiah Ben Joseph. And so thus the Book of Mormon's wrong in 2 Nephi chapter 3. There was no Messiah Ben Joseph. Nope. <laughs> Prophecy and Revelation ceased with the apostles. We deny the power thereof. We embrace titles. Right, women? You want titles, don't you? Titles turn you on and get you hot, don't you? You want to become a polygamous harem woman in somebody's polygamous harem titles, right? Titles turn you on. Because he's wearing a see-through robe. You can see his boobs and tell that he's man. You get to have robes too. Did you know that? <laughs> Second wife would not ever be caught dead in a transparent robe. <laughs> I'm sorry, you can't come into the highest degree of the celestial kingdom because you refuse to wear the robe. <laughs> so there you have it. Joseph Smith changes, metamorphosizes, transforms. Auto Mormons activate whenever they said in Transformers. Why are you still Mormon? Why are you still listening? Oh, you actually believe this is faith promotion, don't you? Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs>